Teachers often lack access to relevant professional development opportunities. Massive open online courses, more commonly known as MOOCs, can be a solution to this as they provide free and open access to professional development opportunities from across the world. But few teachers make use of online courses because they are not aware of the opportunities available or because they may lack digital competence, self-regulated learning competence or language competence to benefit from such courses. In 2019, 10 teachers from across Europe set up local study groups at school level and also at local authority level to help their colleagues get familiar with MOOCs and also develop the skills required to benefit from them. Local study groups did not only help teachers benefit from MOOCs, they also made learning on MOOCs much more relevant for their school context, resulting in a greater impact on teachers' practices. The most enriching experience for teachers in my school was the ability to have real-time support while doing a course in English language, as they felt more confident. But how did these teachers create the study groups, recruited their colleagues and organized their meetings? Step 1. Choose a MOOC. Find a MOOC with a topic that will be relevant to you and your school colleagues. There are plenty of excellent MOOCs for teachers available on different platforms, like for instance the Teacher Academy of the School Education Gateway. Step 2. Getting colleagues on board. Getting the support from your school leadership will help a lot with getting colleagues to join and finding a place to meet. Either way, you will have to inform colleagues of the purpose and value of developing their teaching practice by taking a MOOC, together in a study group, of course. In Romania, I first introduced the project during our school teachers' meeting and then in social media invited teachers to join our study group using a Google Doc and a Doodle to decide together which was the most suitable time for all the teachers to meet. In the Netherlands, I invited everyone at my school through our weekly newsletter. Furthermore, I sent some personal invitations to colleagues who I work with more frequently. In Portugal, I personally invited colleagues I knew and I chose teachers from different subject areas and with different levels of English to make sure those teachers who are not that proficient in English could be supported all the time. Step three, setting up a schedule for the study group. Participating in a study group should be as easy as possible for your colleagues. So finding the right schedule to your meeting is really important. Considering the timing of the MOOC, for example, when modules are open, and any deadline is also very important. Using Doodle to find convenient times for those participating can also help. I organized the first face-to-face -face meeting during the first week of the course. Then, one meeting per week during the duration of the course. And finally, a last meeting to sum up, to share doubts and ideas, and also to get feedback and assess the course. My group was very diverse, as it included uh, teachers with different age range of students, different timetable, or even uh, different hometowns. So I organized meetings in the morning or in the afternoon, based on uh, the schedules and the uh, availabilities of uh, teachers. Step 4. Preparing for the study group meetings. As the coordinating teacher, you will probably receive quite a few questions from your colleagues. So a little preparation in advance can also help. Before the first meeting, it is important to go through the course uh, content to get familiar with the main theme and with the tasks that need to be prepared. Step 5. Running the study group meetings. Most teachers also find out that when they ask the study group members to look at the content and activities in advance of a meeting, did not work. Why? Because the study group members were simply too busy to prepare in advance. It was therefore more effective if they used the time during the meetings to actually go through the course content and activities in pairs or maybe small groups and only engage in more general discussions with the whole study group when relevant. During the first meeting, it is important to explain how the platform works, as well as the peer-to-peer -peer activity, which is the final assignment of these courses. And therefore, it is key 
for teachers to successfully complete the course. These meetings can also be used to clarify doubts and misunderstandings regarding the course content or translations. It's also important to keep regular contact with your colleagues involved in the study group using Facebook groups, Messenger, WhatsApp, and to celebrate each step forward together. Step 6. Following up with the study group. Once the course has come to an end, it is really important to focus on putting what was learned into practice in the classroom. For example, study group members could invite each other to open their lessons where they try out what was learned during the course. When the course is finished, it is useful to ask teachers to fill in a feedback form to understand what worked and what did not work with the study group so that it can be improved next time. So just to summarize, here are all the steps for teachers to set up a study group. So if you have enjoyed this video and are maybe considering doing something similar in your school, make sure to check all the information included in the description of this video. Let's move together! together.